what's up everybody? D Murph here and I am testing out going live. So this is one of my first live videos. We're doing tenderloin on Easter. I'm gonna make a steak salad. So we had an awesome Easter. We hung out with family earlier in the day. We had some great Indian food, biryani, if you've heard of it. Um, my oil is popping, give me a second. So what I'm gonna do with you guys today, you know, since steak is kind of like the thing, I have a really fast tenderloin recipe that we're gonna make tenderloin medium rare. Got an amazing deal at the store. Um, I always jump on those, but here we go. So there's a tenderloin, pretty large slices. It's basically um, the cut of beef that they get the filet from. It's not the filet, the filet is a cleaned up tenderloin, uh, but it is an amazing, amazing, tasty, delicious cut. And there's a tenderloin roast, which if you ever had one, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so then we're just gonna make some really big steaks out of it. And I've let them sit for like an hour and a half, so they're still a little cold. Hoping this little one cooks pretty fast in the oven um, so we can do the baking part really quick. Um, and then they've been crusted with salt and pepper, and that's just about it. I have some really hot vegetable oil going on over here. And the whole reason behind that is you want a nice crispy crust in a sear. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring you guys over here to the oven area um, or the stovetop area. The ovens are right over there. And just kind of show you what I'm doing. Should have on focus. Show you what I'm doing here. <laughs> oh, look at the beef. Always good to end, end your weekend with some yummy beef. So really been getting into tenderloin a bit. Um, trying to eat a little bit healthier with the steaks. So if we're doing like a steak salad or something, we go do this. Okay, so the oil's really hot, medium high-ish uh, heat. You can see it's very liquidy. That's when you know it's ready. Um, windows are open, so the smoke alarm doesn't go off. That's what we're gonna try to do here. And then just get that sizzling there. I'm gonna bring the heat up just a little more. And there's plenty of room for two. Just get that oil around. There you go. And just center them in the in the middle. Most of your heat's gonna be right there, so that will help for a good cook. And this one, they actually came together, so I can actually put them like that, almost like a big steak to get a great sear. I want a little more heat out of that, and then you sear them for about two minutes. So we're gonna go ahead and set the timer here. Two minutes. So it's two minutes on one side and then two minutes on the other side for really nice crust. And then you can kind of touch up the edges. My oven is on like 500 degrees Fahrenheit right now. So I'm not too worried about that. I think that'll crisp up the edges really nicely. Um, it's not popping just the way I want it. So I'm gonna bring the heat up a little bit. You have to watch because this can get crazy. All right, I'm gonna turn on my pan. Um, so far so good though, but so far it's behaving. Well, I hope you guys had a great Easter. Uh, it's been a pretty nice, chill weekend. Relax a little bit. Yesterday, actually, was homework all day long for me. Um, we were able to go out, get some dinner, and uh, go to church. And then today, we just hung out and went over to family's house. I had a really good time. And the idea is to close it out with some yummy, delicious tenderloin. Uh, we're going to do tenderloin salad because it's getting a little bit later in the day. I'll try to zoom in a little bit for y'all. There we are. So that's going to be a little bit healthy. See, I'm really excited about live videos. What I'm going to try to do is make some really fast, quick recipes, uh, 10 to 20 minutes, because you probably don't want to watch the recipe longer than that. And just do those live on YouTube, because uh, one, I really enjoy the interaction. I really enjoy interacting with people and people can like comment and whatnot. Uh, right now, it doesn't look like we have anybody on, but that's fine. And then I can post these videos for later. I don't have a whole lot of time to call it. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. Looks like, I don't know, that light might be, oh, <laughs> messing with it a little bit. How it's showing up. There we go, I think that's showing up a little better. Almost there, six seconds, then we flip. Yeah, just a few techniques here, really hot oil, dry steak. I have had them dry, put a paper towel before I throw in the salt and pepper, and then I have to give you a decent crust. Let's find out. Am I making it up or? Look at that. The little red, charred bit. That's what you're going for. You flip them over. Oh, that's one you want to cut into. I'm just going to flip them around so they're right next to each other. Make the best use, again, the center heat and the pan. Um, 
I haven't done the ribeyes. Way too many ribeyes in a pan. And they just don't cook well. They don't cook through. One side will cook better than the other. So when you get them central, sometimes you have to do a pan for each steak. But it's all about temperature and doneness. Okay. There we go. Stop talking to y'all for a little while. We're going to do this side. Minute 40 seconds. Let that crisp up a bit. Let it get a little hot. There we go. That is showing up beautifully. I love that crust. That's the way to do it. And what's going on over here? So I have some other items to do after uh, the steaks are in the oven and baking. It's probably going to take them a little while. I'm hoping 10 minutes to get up to a good medium rare. It's about 130 degrees. Um, so while that's going on, we got some garlic butter we're going to do over here. And then I'm going to prep the salad. And hopefully by the time I'm done, at least this steak right here will be ready. You always work that in a little bit. Make sure you're getting a nice sear. There we go. And I brought it up pretty much to high. So if you don't have all this smoke flowing off your steaks, then you're doing them pretty good. Um, the problem is when the oil starts to burn and the smoke fills the air and your smoke alarm is just right next door. Happens to me all the time. I think I'm losing my hearing because of how much the smoke alarms go off. <laughs> so we open the windows tonight to so get ready for that. Almost done. Start to crisp up nicely. We got about 28 seconds. Then I'm just going to hit the sides. Just cook through the sides a little bit. It's a thick steak, maybe two inches. Um, so it doesn't hurt to crisp up the sides. Again, not too worried about that because I think the oven, which is at 500 degrees Fahrenheit, will finish it off nicely. And this right here, tenderloin, is very expensive if you're in a restaurant. You're looking at $30, $40. Uh, for like 10 ounces, 12 ounces, something like that. And so this is really easy to do at home. And it's super impressive. People think you're like the bomb.com if you're serving them tenderloin. Oh, look at that. Look at that. And what you can kind of do is like almost like a sandwich. Let's see, just put them on the side. And the sandwich there. <laughs> and you can see that it's kind of getting a little smoky. Maybe that's picking up or not, but the oil's starting to turn a little brown. That's your warning sign. So this is just going to be 30 seconds. So 30 seconds here, and then I'm going to flip it 30 seconds there. You might be hearing Chris. Like I said, I'm doing these real and raw. Chris is in the living room. Chris is chilling. And D. Murph is cooking it up. I'm going to shake them around a little bit. Much more smoke coming off now than earlier. But we're just doing two sides on 30 seconds each, so should be fine. All right, so that's done. Oh, look at that crust. This one's going to show better because that was more of an even one. And then the old sandwich milk. Oh, there we go. We're done. We got to turn off the smoke alarm. Ah, coming at you from the Murphy household. <laughs> okay, but these guys are cooked well. Um, probably should have cut that back just a few seconds. And that's one thing, too. Um, I might start doing it to where I'm not searing the sides as much, because I've learned that if I just do one, one side on each, smoke alarms aren't too crazy. Some of you guys probably deal with that. Some of you guys probably don't. Um, but it's totally worth it for the taste of this. So what do I have over here? This is a grill pan. Let me show you that really quick. So what's really nice about this is it holds or elevates your, your steak so it cooks perfectly, right? If it's a flat pan, kind of like this frying pan that I just used, what happens is that it will sear and cook the steak even more than it needs to be. Um, so here we go. And I have another trick. Y'all call me cheaters when you see this. <laughs> so this measures internal temperature of the steak. Instant read thermometer. Here we go. Get it. There you go, there's a needle. You just plug that in. I have it set to 130. It's going to go off when this little guy right here hits 130. So just put it right into the center. We're doing pretty good. I think it'll only be a 10 minute cook because uh, there we go. It's at about 80 degrees. Well, it's going down. Not as instant as I want it to be, about 78 degrees. So that's maybe a 10 minute cook. We'll see. And then I can just stick this to my microwave right up here. Okay. So we'll bring you guys 
over a little bit so you can see the oven. And there's the dryer. I don't want you seeing that. <laughs> so we just grab these guys. That's my apron, by the way. It's only one way to roll. Dad life, college life, work life. No balance. <laughs> so just pop those guys in, 500 degrees, and we'll let that bake. Shouldn't take too long. My little instant read over here is gonna take care of everything else. All right, so we'll come back over here. Uh -oh, I just pause out of focus, that's not good. There we go, autofocus is back on. You don't want to pause autofocus on your camera. Hello, everybody. Listen, guys, we're still watching. All right. So next we're going to get the garlic butter going. This one's pretty easy. Adds a nice little extra something-something to your meal. Kind of get it a little hot in the beginning, like medium, medium hot, just to bring the butter down. Let that go. So while that's working, let me take this nasty light out of the way. While that's working, you can crush your garlic. And like I said, we're doing a salad today. So I did save some of the prep for you since we're waiting for the steak to finish. Bring it down. Um, so what you do here, there we go. You see the garlic, you see the pan. So I crush the garlic and I just toss it in there. I'm going to do these little guys over there, you know, two at a time. And that just releases the juices and kind of just helps it spread around the butter. Okay. Let's drop it in. Pop it. Pop it like it's hot and drop it like it's hot. <laughs> you got the dad jokes all day long. There you go. So we got the garlic, the crushed garlic, going in the butter. That's great for topper. Um, just to bring that a little more flavor out of that steak. We'll get bouncing all over here. So then you just take it, kind of mix it up a little bit. Don't set off your smoke alarm. <laughs> I hope YouTube lets me edit something, you know. Mmm, smell that. You can kind of smell the garlic. It's starting to do its job. Um, so now. Now that that's kind of cooking and doing well, my stove, I think, leans a little bit, so I'm just going to move everything to one edge. And just kind of leave that on really low heat and just let it cook while you're doing everything else. I'm just going to add a little bit of salt, give it a little extra kick. And this salt is great. It's not like, um, I guess, regular salt that is too strong. When you try it, it actually works out really well. Um, and it's not too strong, so you can kind of... Put a lot on there and not pay the price later. I'll bring it a little closer. There we go. Did you guys see that? We'll wash this because it's got some raw steak on it. All right, we're at 91 degrees and, and counting. Oh, this smells so good. There we go. And you just gotta watch this um, kind of pop in every now and then see what's going on with your garlic because uh, it's usually okay on a low heat but just depending on how long the steaks take you want to check every now and then make sure it's not burning or anything so I'll bring you over here to the vegetables I sharpen my knife if anybody wants to know that is one of the biggest things people make fun of me for in the comments is my knife isn't sharp enough for YouTube which I probably agree <laughs> So, we got some chopped up red pepper. We're gonna do some carrot. And then uh, I have some feta cheese, because you gotta have some kind of cheese. And then we're gonna do some almonds. And so it's really easy prep. So, steaks, please cook fast. <laughs> there we go. And one technique is to do a curl like that, like kind of like the claw. I wasn't doing that in the beginning, but that usually makes sure that you don't end up chopping your fingers off. Which isn't a bad technique to aim for. Keep your fingers. There we go. So, if anybody is watching right now, what did you guys have for uh, Easter? What is the meal? What are you eating right now? <laughs> you might be wrapping up your day. 
we're pretty much wrapping up. We're just having a late dinner because we had such a big lunch. There we go. Those are all ready. And I'm just going to do a little slices of the carrot. These little rounds right here. If you do celebrate Easter, not everyone celebrates Easter. It's more of a Christian holiday. There we go. And then I have viewers from everywhere. There we go. Yeah, these are coming through nicely. So not too much. And when you're doing your toppings for your salad, like I'm looking at uh, like a regular plate. All right, so you don't need a ton. Even for two people, you don't need a ton of toppings. And I'll show you how this all comes together in a second. I mean, if you want a ton, you can have a ton. It's all up to you. It's your meal. <laughs> there we go. And curl those fingers. You're going to lose them. <laughs> there we go. The last cut. Perfect. There we go. So there those guys. See, look, this is what I'm talking about. It's already starting to, to brown a little bit. Let's get that where you can see it. So that's why you kind of want to keep one eye on it. You don't want it to brown too much. Like, that's not terrible. But I need to turn this all the way to low. I'll probably take it off the heat for a minute. So we'll just set that there. Let it marinate. Create those little Christmas juices. Um, so I think we might stay over here instead of bouncing to the other side. Steaks are at 109. This is going to work. This is going to work. <laughs> Outstanding. Yeah, actually, I have to take you to the other side build. So we got just some uh, from Target, 50-50 blend, and then feta crumbs, of course. You gotta have some kind of cheese. And then. Lightly salted blue diamond almonds. Um, I have a new bag. This is almost empty. <laughs> okay, yeah, so you can see that garlic's just kind of wanting to burn. We're not going to let it. So I'll put that on the steak. I'm going to let the steak rest for five minutes once it's done. So we're just going to let that set there. Um, put it back on when it's resting to bring it up to temp. So we'll bring you around the kitchen. Hello, everybody. I hope this is working. <laughs> to your liking. It's working, but is it to your liking? This door. Can't show you guys all the junk that's in here and all the messy places. Let me just show you the clean places. Okay. There are messy places. This house is perfect. Okay. Bringing y'all down. This is the salad prep area. And you get everything ready. Probably steaks at 120. It's gonna be coming out pretty quick. So we'll just get these built. Two plates. One for me and the love. And then I just fill in the center area. There we go. And you know you can toss your salad too. Um, I've just kind of gotten into this habit with the filet salads of filling in the center, putting on some toppings, and then calling that a day. So here we go. Bring over the vegetables. Yeah, you really, you guys are going to think I'm talking about this way too much. You really got to watch that garlic. Like, it will burn if you're not watching it closely. It's like it's just waiting for you to walk away, and then it'll get super hot and burn. Top it some red peppers. What these are. Yep. Peppers help it pop. Peppers help it pop. There we go. Also, great taste with some steak, you yeah. know. Love the flavor combo. Okay. There we go. And then get those carrots in there. We got a carrot running away. Just kind of spread it around. Damn it. Voila. There's your help. I'm eating like this. Okay. So we'll get the plays out, set them on the oven uh, so they can rest. Yeah. 
And don't play with your fillet, man. When it says it's 130 and you're going for medium rare, just take it out because it will get you. Like I left them in, I was like, okay, I want to hit 135. Well, they heat up a little bit while you're cooking. So, all right, so we got this down. Almonds are great. Like, this is a snack that I try to go to. This goes slightly healthier than spicy Cheetos. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I love spicy Cheetos. So this was, okay, there's like five in here. No, no. There we go. So this was like my alternative. And so also keeping in mind how long those steaks have been out. They're still sizzling a little bit, um, still cooking. I mean, they're not on heat, but just they came out so hot and the pan's hot uh, that they're still cooking a little bit. But I'm going to let them sit for like five minutes before I slice in the wood and add it to the salad. Hit up with some feta. There we go. You know, any kind of cheese that you like. Feta, it just, this is really good with steak too. It's a little more, um, I don't know, I'd say robust. It kind of has a good flavor that combines with steak. So see, you got all this going on here. It looks great. Let's bring it in close. And I also try to do something a little bit aesthetically. It looks like the focus isn't, autofocus isn't focusing. Okay, is that still blurry? Yes, it is. Hang on a second. I did this last time too. Then um, focus. Optics. There we go. Guys, I made a video and it was awful because of this stupid button on the screen. <laughs> Turn off focus. So yeah, as you see, there's some color going on here. It looks nice. Um, it's gonna taste nice too. So I try to try to plan that a little bit, like the color and the differences. The feta works really well because that white pop. What we go for here is tasty and good looking. So if you like tasty, good looking stuff, you're in the right place. All right. So our salads are done. Okay. This door to the dryer keeps opening, and I know why. It's because the stupid, <laughs> Priya just commented, it's the stupid smoke alarms that keep going off. I keep opening the door to get the broom to hit them. <laughs> okay, bringing you in, this is where you want to be. This is where everyone's going to skip to. They're like, we're tired of hearing D-Murph. Just show us the steak. And I'm right there with you. Okay, so we're just going to cut into the little guy today. Because I want to wrap this up. You guys have seen how everything's gone down. Let's get that thing sliced. And let's get it on the steak. It's almost 9 o'clock in Central Time, so it's time to finish this thing. You know what I'm saying? Time to eat. Time to relax and get ready for Monday fun day. So I'll bring you guys down. Sure, guys. Sure. Okay, bring it down a little more. There's a steak. There's a cutting board. Those are the time everyone has been waiting for. Long awaited. Oh. Improvising. Not as cool. So we're just going to give it 60 seconds. So in the meantime, let me get a mitten and we can enjoy the way these things look. So if I was going to wait a long time, like 10 minutes or so, I would have put tin foil over them. But I figured with making the salad and everything moving around, I was going to be ready. So bring it in nice and close. Now I want you to appreciate that autofocus and how it clearly shows you the steak and all the juices flowing around. It's one thing I love about it is that can, like, you can just shoot these great videos. Like it focuses super fast. Look at that. So that's a bigger tenderloin. Okay, and see our garlic? See, so it wanted to burn, didn't let it. It's getting close. <laughs> so we'll call this done. That's why low heat is the way to go. Don't like melt that butter and then get it on low heat. Don't do anything else after that. Okay, so we can turn that off. All right, I'm pretty satisfied that the steak has rested enough on this fabulous day of rest. So we're just gonna cut right in the middle. Um, it's almost two pieces, so I think right here will show the best. Oh, yeah. We'll get you the big piece. I'm keeping it a secret what it looks like. <laughs> there you go. Check it out. That's a pretty solid medium. I'm liking what I'm seeing here. 
Here, I'll, I'll get it in a little bit closer. Did you guys see that cut? Okay, autofocus, don't fail me now. And that's what it would do. Okay. There we go. So yeah, about medium. And sometimes they get a little bit redder the longer they sit. But that's that's pretty good. I'm happy with that. So just slice it up and top off the salad. Oh, jeez. This video is probably taking forever. Look, man, I can't let a recipe this way. <laughs> you talk too much. It's a little hot. Other thing, always be careful of this thing if you get a can. Metal and it'll get you. Alright. So, yeah, we can just slice like that. That'll look really good. Kind of thin. Look at that. You guys gonna use hateful comments? My, my knife is slicing perfectly. <laughs> I've started sharpening it almost every time I use it. And that's really, this is super tender. Super tender, just the way you want it. This is gonna look great on top of that salad, too. A nice pink center. And, you know, this is the way I would recommend slicing it because it displays the cookness and it's a nice, big, exciting piece of steak. You know, like, like when you get a nice slice of steak and the middle is, like, pink or red, um, that's pretty exciting. So, it's, you know, how you cut is big, too. You just do it like this. All right, almost done. This side's a little fatty, so I think we'll just do one more slice there. Oh, bam. oh, don't you wish you were here? There we go. Finishing out that steak salad. There we go. We'll bring the really nice looking pieces to the top. All right. That looks good to me. Just gonna finish it. Can we add a little bit of salt to salad? Not much though. Give me some pepper. A big plus on salad. And then hit up with some olive oil. Bring that over the top. Bam. Then you know if you want dressing or anything, you can go ahead and enjoy that. I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do with this butter. Have a little food brush, <laughs> sauce brush, get some on there, and just put that over the steak. You know, that'll elevate it, give it a nice little flavor there. And so if I'm doing like a, a solid steak, like over here, let me jump you over. Then you just get your butter and, and top it off. So you can either slice it up. I think I'm actually going to put it on a slice because that's my steak. <laughs> Probably some for leftovers. There you go. Wow. And look at that. We beat the garlic. The bar garlic did not beat us. So hopefully you know you learned some techniques. Here's your salad. That looks phenomenal. That's a great healthy way to end the, end the week. Bringing you back up here. So I don't think Pre Pre is going to see the cereal over there in the photos. Um, I don't think Pre Pre is going to get on the video. Um, talk to you guys. Sometimes she will. Sometimes she won't. So I'll just take one bite. Don't tell her, it's a secret. There we go, I gotta get this thing set up. Just take a bite of a kind of good one. I'll leave a good one for her because I'm a good husband. I'll let you guys know. Mmm! This is pretty good. It's not too salty. Mmm! I love tenderloin, especially like on salad and stuff. It's so freaking good. Yeah, not too salty, so I'm gonna put a lot of salt. But again, the salt we use isn't very powerful. Um, it's not overwhelming. So tenderloin, if you haven't had it, very tender. And very little fat. Oh, that's why I put butter on it. But really nice. A really nice uh, beef here. It turned out well. Probably could go to 125, you know. Uh, 130 was okay. Looks medium, medium rare. But 
125 would be a really nice medium rare if you want a little bit of press. But hey, thanks for watching my first live video ever. I hopefully this helped you learn a little bit about how to make a tenderloin, put in some techniques there to make you better at your steak game. Uh, sorry for the smoke alarm, but it's live, it's real, that crap happens. <laughs> uh, thanks again, guys. I'm experimenting and trying this out, so we'll see where it goes. Uh, you know, hit me some, with some comments and questions. One thing I'm hoping is that I get these requests for re recipes, right, in, in the comments in some of my videos. I'm hoping I can just jam out a live one for you. It's time is pretty tight because of college and everything else, um, but I'm hoping that now that I'm doing live, if you know, I can interact more with the audience. Um, so thank you again for watching this video. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Give it a thumbs up if you like Tenderloin. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't already because we're going to be jamming out live videos. It's going to be great for 2021. I'm looking forward to it. One last time, thank you so much for watching me eat steak. And have a great night. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.